There are over 400 asylum seekers in hotels like this in and around Cannock, Staffordshire. Some of the 45,000 people nationwide that the Home Secretary wants to move out. We've had to use hotel accommodation at considerable cost to the British taxpayer and to huge inconvenience to local communities. If you're wondering why the government is fixated on stopping small boats and hotel accommodation for migrants, here's why. This is literally the fault line that is dividing communities in Britain at the moment around the accommodation of asylum seekers. More and more demos are happening outside migrant and refugee hotels. A small handful have turned violent. A month ago in Nosley near Liverpool, a police van was set alight. There were 15 arrests. So, who are the organisers? And are fascist groups exploiting or enabling local people with genuine concerns? Do you know what patriotic alternative stands for? No. That's what you don't. You've hijacked well, and exploited local concerns. We've just been concern. up there for an hour telling them what we stand for. The former mining town of Cannock in the West Midlands, population around 30,000. 450 asylum seekers are accommodated locally on four different sites. The Holiday Inn has been used for this purpose for two years now. Come on, Mum, say what you need to say. Helen. Four weeks ago, locals Kaz Southall and Tracy Sweeney organised the first demonstration against the hotels. About 150 people attended. Last Saturday, the second demo. The crowd had doubled. We have never done a protest before in our life, so it was all new to us. And the only reason we wanted to do it was to keep our kids and our grandkids safe. I see. They put these illegal immigrants in these hotels in our town. They've had no checks done on them whatsoever, and they're allowed to walk our streets. We don't know what's walking our streets. There's already been reports, reports of them following young girls, women, attacks, and, and God knows what else. And the police are doing nothing about it. And you know, you know when the police say that they are not, they haven't detected like a rise in crime locally. Do, do you believe the police when no, they say no, that? No, no, not at all. And can I we ask you another proof. question? When when the government says they are dealing with the problem, so this new legislation this week, do you do you believe them? No, no, no. They're trying to calm it down. It's a load of bollocks. We've been investigating the build-up on social media to the demonstrations in Cannock. A few things stand out. First up, the malicious rumour mill. A post appears with a story, for example, of how a young woman was followed home or attacked by a migrant from one of the hotels, which then turns out to be baseless. We've looked into some of these rumours in Cannock, and the only one that resulted in any police action recently involved an asylum seeker tampering with someone's car in the town a few weeks ago. The other striking thing about the online build-up to these demos is how the far-right nationally hijacks local Facebook groups. Alison Smith runs a community notices Facebook page. A few weeks back, posted to inform the neighbourhood about the anti-hotels demo, then for balance, posted about a pro-refugee counter-demo in Cannock as well. But then once I posted the other one, all hell broke loose. And that a lot of the posts, it was shared on a lot of sites that were nothing to do with Cannock, nothing to do with Cannock at all. They were purely racist sites. What happened to, 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 to your parish Facebook group then? Completely what? hijacked. And I'm not joking when I say we had sort of 30, 40 an hour trying to join. 30 or 40 an hour? <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding you. We've spoken to a number of other groups around the country who oppose asylum seekers' hotels but have no truck whatsoever with fascist groups. That is not the case in Cannock, though. Local organisers have got into bed with a group called Patriotic Alternative. So, who are they? Patriotic Alternative is a small fringe group. Their membership is in the hundreds rather than in the thousands. They want to remove non-white people from Britain. Their leader, Mark Collett, is something of a Hitler fanboy and has Nazi sympathies. They're small though, so are of limited interest. What is interesting is the extent to which local organisers in Cannock are aware of what Patriotic Alternative stand for. 
they offered us, us advice. Um, they offered to put a, a page up for us, and they've, they've supported all the way through. Do, because we, we're not, we've never done it before. Done it before. We, couldn't, we didn't even know how to set a page up on Facebook. Are you aware of patriotic alternatives background? Do you know I what wasn't. they're? <laughs> yeah. Everything. We weren't aware of anything. The reason I'm asking about patriotic alternative is they are like they're, they're like a fascist group, basically. We didn't even know what to do. We didn't even know what fascist was until probably a month ago. I built it last week. I still don't understand it. When we first started, we went house to house. Sam Milley is patriotic alternatives regional organizer in Yorkshire. After his speech, we asked him and Kaz whether they are on the same ideological page. No, you don't know what patriot, patriotic alternative stands for. No, I can only speak. Like well, I can tell you, Sam, I can tell you one thing. Local people who have genuine concerns don't actually know what you stand for, and you've hijacked and well, exploited local concerns. We've just been concerns. up there for an hour telling them what we stand for. We got cheers, clapping, support. Yeah, you know, Ka it's Kaz like... and Tracy just got involved in February. You know what I mean? They're, not, they're new to this. And I'm not sure they know what, who you are or what you stand for. They, they do know us. We've been, we're friends with them. They share the same concerns. And, and this is the thing, you see. It's like you, you want to disqualify people from having these concerns. Do, do you think the local people who you're liaising with here know about, for example, where you stand on the Great Replacement Theory, Removing, like no, like remo Mark removing, removing non-white people. Do you want to be replaced? Britain. The people of Cannock said no. We don't need them to agree with us on 100 percent of things. We want to provide them a, a, a larger voice. You know, I mean, because we're here, you're you're here. You know, if this was a, co a couple of locals, you'd, you'd be, be ignoring them, wouldn't you? You know. In Cannock, then, fascist groups are both exploiting genuine concern and amplifying the voices of people who agree with them. The difficulty is deciphering which one is which.